Hello, hello, dear brothers and sisters in Christ and everybody who's watching this program. Welcome. I'm glad you are here and we are going to learn something today too. Every day we learn every new thing. Every day everything new. So is today. Today is not different from other days. So what is going on? What's, what's the news? Okay, today Professor Bart Ehrman. Professor Bart Ehrman is our topic and we are going to continue with uh, this topic. We are going to investigate his claims, his insight, his great wisdom and miraculous, uh, uh, you know, uh, miraculous presentation of his amazing topic. We are going to deal already. Well, come again. All right. So Bart Ehrman is a famous American uh, uh, theologian and a Bible teacher and uh, uh, uh and now is a it was he used to be a Bible teacher. It was a theologian, and then now become anti Bible. And he found out a lot of errors, a lot of fiction in the Bible, and he threw away the Bible. He says so, but uh, the fact is uh, there is something else. So who is Bart Ehrman? Who is Bart Ehrman? Let us go and see what his topic is. Uh, uh, okay, go down. Okay, um, okay. Where is Bart Ehrman? Bart Ehrman? Bart Ehrman? Bart Ehrman? Bart Ehrman? This is his uh, 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 account. He's a professor. He's presenting in a very big meeting. Legends, fictions, and manuscripts that illustrate Christ's story. Legends, fictions, and that illustrate Christ's story. Uh, 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 professor Bart Ehrman. Uh, yes, 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 yes. He's going to present to us. Uh, before that, let me tell you uh, who Bart Ehrman is. Books by Bart Ehrman. Books by Bart Ehrman. Oh, he has the best books. Angels. The Bible really says about the angels. Heavenly hosts. Okay? You have this... Uh, Almost 1,000 five-star, almost five-star books. Books of Enoch. <laughs> books of Enoch. Wow. Enoch, 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 Enoch. Heaven and Hell History. Bartleman. Woo. Five-star. Five-star. Lost Christian Christianity. Wow. Lost Christianity. Jesus interrupted, revealing the hidden contradiction in the Bible. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. How Jesus become God? Oh, really? Um, misquoting Jesus. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, the triumph of Christianity. Forbidden religion. Okay. Bartarman. 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 Lost the scriptures. Bartarman. Law in, in, uh, yeah. Did Jesus exist? Oh, Bartarman. Wow. He's just debating. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Bart Arman, Bart Arman. He, uh, uh, he uh, forged Bart Arman. Wow, this is Jesus. <gasps> Can't you see how you put it? This Jesus. Wow, Bart Arman. Can we trust the Bible in the historical Jesus? Okay. After the New Testament, Bart Arman. Look, look. Uh, when I was, uh, I, I used to work for uh, 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 a printing company, and I used to print, uh, uh, manage, uh, I mean, uh, um check the quality the quality of books like the the printing books and um uh, do uh, you know check the pages and uh, there, there are 18 major uh, quality checks i used to uh, check them and then uh, bind them this is who who this is bart arman this is american so i used to do and then i used to print a lot of and i used to read his books uh, now the misquoting truth you see inverted so this is bart arman uh, so you can see how famous he is in this in, in an American uh, society, and uh, let us see. Uh, and uh, he was a Catholic. Uh, he was a Catholic believer, and then he went to the uh, evangelicals and become a minister and um, uh, became a, a theologian. And then uh, he found out a lot of Bible contradictions, and then he left Christianity. The reason he left was, as I as far as I know, he is a hired Saudi agent. You got money, a lot of money. This site is us. www. usa. usislam.org. Uh, uh, us Islam. Uh, this is uh, the site which they extensively use uh, Bart Arman uh, because he allowed them. 
the reason he's working against the Bible is money, 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 money. And then he also make a, uh, in Amazon, he sells and he make a lot of money. Uh, money, money, money. You remember, um, yesterday we're tell, uh, discussing about, um, what, what, um, bring me, bring me that man. Ahmed did that. Money, 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 money. I can give you money. I can give you money. This is an Islamic website, but all everything is Bart Arman. Bart Arman. This is Bart Arman, uh, conversion story. All this, uh, Islamic site is, uh, full of Bart Arman. The reason is because he's a sold out, uh, uh, man. He's uh, like Balaam. Balaam, you remember last time? In the book of, uh, Exodus chapter 20, 22, uh, the one, the, the prophet, the false prophet Balaam. He is like that. And let us go and do some investigation. First, uh, Bart means son of the earth. Son of the earth. Earth, you know, the son of the ground. Bart means what? Son of the ground. A Herman means a famous man. Son of the ground. Son of the earth. A great man. Son of the earth. A great man is the interpretation or the name behind the meaning of Bart Erman. If his name is just, uh, uh, just uh, his main name, Bazarus, you remember this. Bart Erman means son of the ground, the earth, and a great man of great esteem or a great man. Man of great name and son of the ground. And it goes, the reason is um, uh, in Genesis, you remember, in a corruption, and it came to pass when uh, men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. As the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives all which they choose. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, he is a son of the ground, flesh. Yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. <coughs> there were giants. Uh, the, the English translation, the King James, that is wrong translation. There were Nephilims in the earth in those days. That's the correct translation. Nephilim means the fallen ones, the fallen one. Also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men. Mighty men which were of old men of renown, great name, the fallen one, but men of great name, men of great name. People say angel, angel, angel. It's not angel. These are the fallen children. They were supposed to be in, in this generation. You remember if you go back to one book, one, one book here, the generation of Adam, and then these were the righteous generation. This Seth and Enos and uh, Enoch worked with God and he was not found and all the righteous men, Mahalaliel and Jared and, and Enoch worked with God. Enoch worked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters and God took him. These are from, from these men, from this generation, the fallen one came up. The fallen one came up. They, they departed from God and their destruction. So Bart Arman means son of the earth and of great man of great name, great name. <laughs> man of great esteem, 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 self esteem, something like that. Let's go to now to uh, his argument and learn from uh, legend. The legend and the legend, the legend in uh, Bart Arman. Let's listen. His current book projects include forgery and counterforgery in the early Christian tradition and how Jesus let, let's 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 get it. well American Americans like to uh, climb climb uh, I mean clap their hands to who admire somebody who is a fallen one. Oh, give him water Abdul that's remember if when you remember this water it's from Saudi well thank you very much for that uh, generous introduction uh, I'd like to stress, uh, before I start, that uh, even though I'll be talking about illuminated manuscripts, uh, it's uh, obvious from uh, what Kristen said that I'm not an art historian. Uh, I'm a scholar of the New Testament and early Christianity. Uh, the other thing to say is that I teach in a different part of the universe from the one we are in now. Uh, 
My world is the heart of the Bible Belt. My students at the University of North Carolina tend to be conservative evangelicals who, as a rule, think that if you, uh, if you don't believe in the Bible, you can't be a Christian. And if you're not a Christian, you will roast in hell, uh, which means the Bible is very important for these people. Uh, the thing about my students is that most of them believe in the Bible more than they know about it. Uh, in fact, they know very little about the Bible, as it turns out. Uh, this comes as a constant surprise to me every year, but it is uh, nonetheless true and uh, becomes clear to me when I teach my introduction to the New Testament class every spring. This class is a large class. Uh, sometimes it's 300 students, sometimes 360 students, and I begin the class by giving them, uh, on the first day of class, before I've taught them a single thing, I give them a pop quiz. I give them this pop quiz because I'm interested in knowing uh, what do they know about the New Testament, and I'm interested in them knowing what do they know about the New Testament. It's not a hard quiz. There are 11 questions on it, and I tell my students that if anyone in the class gets eight of these right, I'll buy you dinner at the Armadillo Grill. Last yes, is another uh, uh, Ahmed Didat. I will give you, if you know this, I'll give you this lire to the Indian lire. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you. If anybody is going to come and debate with me, I will give you $40,000, $40,000. Where did it that many come from? From Saudi, from Bahrain, from Air? Yeah, yeah, we know, we know. Here about one dinner. Uh, they're not hard questions. So I start off, the, fir the first question is, how many books are in the New Testament? Well, now you would think kids who had grown up in church their entire life, been Sunday school, they would know how many books there are, but they don't. It's actually an easy answer, by the way. The answer is 27. Uh, the reason that's an easy answer is because when you think of the New Testament, you think of God, and you, you think of the Christian God, which means you think of the Trinity. And what is 27? 27 is 3 to the third power. Hmm. 3 times 3 times 3. It's a miracle. <laughs> I then asked them, in what language were these books written? And uh, this is an interesting question to ask because, as it turns out, a lot of my students think that the answer is Hebrew. And I've never quite figured it out, but I think it's because when they watch these shows on the Discovery Channel or the History Channel about Jesus, they're always flashing up Hebrew manuscripts behind them, so they associate Hebrew with Jesus. So, but it turns out uh, Hebrew is not the right answer. Um, usually I have maybe just five or six students who think that the answer is English. Um, the right answer is, is Greek, uh, is the language of, of the New Testament, uh, as is the language of many of the manuscripts uh, that are in this, this collection. I, I, I mean, I do have to admit, I do throw in a few curveballs because I don't want to buy any dinners. And so, so one of my curveballs is, uh, uh, what, what was the Apostle Paul's last name? <laughs> and invariably, I'll have some students say, of Tarsus, <laughs> uh, which is true enough. Uh, but uh, the, re the reason I have, part of what I do with this quiz is I try to try to teach them something in the midst of giving them this quiz. And one of the things I... Imagine you're going to a school uh, to learn something. And then there is a teacher who, uh, you, you, you go there to learn. Yeah, you, you go there to learn. And this man is supposed to present you and to teach you, to guide you. What is his job? ridiculing people uh you know making all kinds of bizarre bizarre or or, or ridiculous uh, things asking ridiculous questions how idiotic this man is beyond imagination I'm try i try to teach i want them to know is that in the ancient world most people did not have last names uh, and so, uh, unless you were one of the upper crust uh, aristocrats in Rome, you, you just didn't have a last name. You just had one name. That's why. Don't you know the older people don't didn't have last name? Don't you know, you idiot? You come to my school. Don't you know that the older people, the people of Rome, the people of Israel, all the people, old time, they don't have last name. You idiot! You come to learn from my class. <laughs> Why in the New Testament, all these people have the same name, and you have to identify them some way. So you have all these Marys in the New Testament. So is it Mary of Bethany? Is it Mary the mother of Jesus? Is it Mary Magdalene? Et cetera, et cetera. And the reason I have to teach this to my students is because they naturally assume that Jesus Christ, <laughs> Christ is his last name. And so I, you know, I have to tell them that you know, it's not, not Jesus Christ born to Joseph and Mary Christ. <laughs> uh, so. Well, one of the things that my students generally don't know is that the literal interpretation of the Bible, which they think is the only interpretation of the Bible, but in fact, the literal interpretation of the Bible has not always been a central part of the Christian religion. In many times and places over the centuries, it has not been the literal words of the Bible, but the stories behind them that mattered. 
Moreover, throughout history, many people have not insisted that historical reality matters for spiritual truth. This can be clearly seen in the history of Christian art, a very small snippet of which we'll be seeing tonight. Since I'm not an art historian, I will not be commenting on the details or the artistic features of the various uh, pieces of art that I'll be showing. My purpose in this talk is quite different. What is the relationship of the artwork found in medieval and early modern illuminated manuscripts and the legendary accounts of the life of Christ? What's the relationship between those two things? As we will see, the character of the stories that lie behind much of this art is not simply based on the legendary tendencies of later Christian times, although some of it is. Some of it goes all the way back to the legendary impulses of the earliest attested Christian tradition from the New Testament itself. Artists throughout the Middle Ages, in any event, were not concerned with our modern interest in separating what we might call history from what we might call legend. The stories that they knew, uh, stories of, about Jesus, told important truths, and the historicity of these stories in our modern sense was not an issue for many people, most people, through the Middle Ages. I'm going to start with some art that illustrates stories that everyone today thinks were legendary. And then I'll move into artistic representations of New Testament accounts, in part to see how these stories about Jesus came into existence in an effort to fill in what was not known about the life of Jesus from the New Testament and to illustrate what was believed to be known, even though this knowledge was legendary. That'll make sense by the time I'm done. So. I'm going to begin with uh, an artistic representation of what is known as the harrowing of hell. The harrowing of hell. This is a, uh, this is a, a portrayal of the harrowing of hell in a 12th century life of Christ uh, from England, which is in the holdings of the Getty Museum, but, uh, but is, is the one piece uh, that I'm showing that is not actually in the exhibit that we will be seeing tonight. Now, uh, in the exhibit that's on, that's on display. So, uh, Here's, this is Jesus. As you can tell, Jesus has been crucified already. He's got the wounds. He is, uh, he is putting the devil under his feet. And this here uh, is representing the, uh, the, the mouth of Sheol, or the mouth of Hades, uh, in which the dead had been residing. Uh, the dead had been residing in the bosom of Hades. Uh, and so these are the dead people who had died before Jesus, who are now being saved by Jesus after the, uh, after the, uh, after the death of Jesus. Uh, he is able to extend his salvation not only to people who were living at the time that he was alive, and not only to people who lived afterwards, his salvation reaches even to those who are already resident in hell. And he is bringing them out of Sheol to give them uh, salvation in, in heaven. So that's, it. that's what the, uh, the, the picture is about. Let me say a few words about the stories, the legends behind it. The harrowing... Of hell. Uh, the word harrowing, it refers to this act of Jesus bringing people out of hell and emptying hell of its inhabitants uh, because now salvation is in, uh, it, it has become possible. In the New Testament Gospels, we have. Uh, let's, uh, let's stop here. Um, I think you guys uh, uh, got him a lot of information, what he's doing. Uh, the reason I uh, allow you to watch all this is because I want you to have uh, a profound knowledge about this guy. And what he does, and uh, how uh, uh, you know how he teaches, and uh, uh, whatsoever, whatever he he, he does, and, and uh, his books and uh, all, uh, everything. Now, let us go to the point. Now, the picture, the harrowing of hell, as uh, 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 it is a 12th century England writers, England writers, uh, writer those people. They, uh, you know, uh, did a picture like that, and then they have their own interpretation. Now, my question for him will be, if you are accusing them, uh, what about uh, Dante, the famous one? You remember? I remember when I was uh, working in, in Inferno. The Dante's Inferno is based on the, 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 just, just a, a kind of... Uh, um, uh, he's a 13 or 13th century uh, uh, writer. Dante uh, uh, is uh, is like uh, is like uh, this. It's a famous book. Uh, by the way, this is a famous book which gives you a lot of interesting things. And then also the, the divine uh, uh, divine comedy. 
The Divine Comedy is also the famous one. These are the people who wrote, who thought about imagination, which came uh, something from the uh, from the Catholics. There is also inf uh, Inferno, and there is also Purgatory, and all other things. From that, these people wrote a lot of things. And this is even in, in, in a school, people you know analyze the writing of Dante, the Inferno. Uh, as I said when I was working in a, as a publisher uh, uh, or, or a book reviewer, I used to <clears throat> I used to read this book whenever I have time because it is free for me and to pick up and read. So this there are other books like this which were of spiritual nature uh, about hell and about uh, uh, reward and. Uh, about reward and punishment, all that, those things. Do, do you think we believe, uh, because I read the, the, the uh, Inferno, the, the Inferno of Dante, do you think I'm, I'm going to use it like a Bible reference? Does any Christian who read the Dante's Inferno put it like his book, his Bible? Does it have anything to do with the Bible or the imagination? This is the imagination of Dante. The imagination. Artists, you know, my, um, uh, Michael Angelo and others, you know, the pictures of <coughs> the famous uh, uh, artists, they are, they are displayed. Do they represent anything? No, they don't mean anything. Our, the Bible says, you know, thou shall not make any graven image. No, in any picture, anything. We don't believe in, uh, in the picture of Jesus. We don't be believe, that's uh, the, the Catholics. One of the problem of the Catholics is they have this, they, they adopt the, the, the workers of men and then they put them as their, you know, um, figure, figure of a representation of Mary or somebody. We don't believe. We are given the Bible, even an angel or <clears throat> anything who brings a new revelation, a new thing, apart from the gospel, let him be accursed, anathema. That's the, the teaching of the Bible. We don't believe in 12th century fabrication. Somebody wrote something. We don't believe that. And the other thing is, what this idiot didn't know is, we do not believe that God, empty, Jesus go, went to hell and empty hell. There is no, there is no. That means, what is it? Then, what about those uh, criminals who did a lot of uh, things in the world? Are they afraid from hell? Where did he get it? Where is the, where is the root of the Bible? But these Americans, they are, they are idiot. So many of the Americans, have, they don't have any idea, especially they call themselves Christians. How do you go to this, this man's school after all to learn uh, about, about Jesus? About the Bible? This man is nothing but idiot. Idiot babbler. He doesn't know anything. He studied Greek and he studied the Hebrew and then now he's on the top. And then saying a whole lot of things he doesn't know. That's the problem with Christians today. We don't know what we are eating and drinking. That's most of us. It's just our gullible. He doesn't know. We don't believe. The Bible says. Listen. Listen what the Bible says. Second Peter 1 16. Chapter 1, uh, chapter 1 verse 16. Second Peter. Uh, uh, uh. For this, this is, no, I don't use international version. Uh, this is Berian. For we did not follow cleverly devised fables, fairy tales, when we made known to you the, the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We saw it and we witnessed. We didn't believe any fabrication, the King James. For we have not followed cunningly designed fables, fairy tales, fairy tales. We don't. We Christians don't follow any fairy tale. It's a supernatural revelation of the word of God. We believe in that. When we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. What we saw. The Muslims say, oh, there were no uh, account. If anybody tells you that the gospels were written after so many, many years and those eyewitnesses did not write it, Tell them they are the, the liar, the, the children of the devil. They were eyewitnesses. Okay? I, we were eyewitnesses. We saw, we recorded to you. It's not a fairy tale. We never believe in a fairy tale. This man brings a fairy tale and then he tries to convince us. There was no uh, last name in the Old Testament people. What does it have to do with, with Bible teaching? Is that, is that how you teach the Bible? 
about somebody's uh, first name, last name, and this. There, these are people, people of idiot, just Id idiotic people. He doesn't know. I mean, people read his book. I, I, I'm sorry for all those people who believe uh, his book and give him five star. I'm sorry about that because these are lost people, people who are lost, who do not know anything about the Bible. We don't believe in this fabrication. Okay? We don't believe in that. We, look, 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 especially to, to, to your Muslim, uh, because he is your agent, to your Muslim. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. Come on. How was it written? After many centuries, after many hundred years, it was written. Really? Is it, the Bible, the gospel is not a hadith. It's not the hadith, it's not the Muslim. They take the Muslims and they, they want to compare and contrast to the Muslims right, style of writing. No, no, sir, no. You can't do that. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. We, the writer is telling us. We have seen with our eyes. And which we have looked upon. We looked with our, just we, it is real. What does it mean? We have seen with our eyes. We have looked upon Jesus. And our hands have handled of the word of life. <laughs> this is the gospel. This is the gospel writer. They wrote what they saw, what they touched, what they felt, what, what happened is the original account. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto, the, unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and we manifested unto us, that which we have seen. Come on. We were eyewitnesses. Oh, 12th century. Idiot. What 12th century? This is a, the man of the earth. Man of the earth. His earthly man speaks about earthly things. This is, a, um, this is, uh, these are the American scholars. These are the scholars. You know, he is the head of the scholars. But he is a, he is the most stupid, stu the most stupid person who knows nothing about the Bible, but babbles about anything. We never accept anything apart from the Bible. Even we don't trust the church history. We don't trust it. We trust the Bible. The Bible is our source of inspiration. That's what God asks us to read and to study day and night. When we sleep, when we wake up, when we do our job, God always Ask us to read the Bible. Meditate upon it. That is our work. Oh, legend is fiction in the hell. Harrowing of them. He makes something out of nothing. He's idiot. That which we have seen and heard declared we unto you. That you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with, uh, 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 with his Son, Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 This is what our belief. Our belief is original, authentic, and trustworthy. I don't trust these this, 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 this people who, who lies and deceives. Men of the earth and men of great name, they will be doomed. The Saudi money will not save them. This, huh? The Saudi money. This Saudi money will not save them when Christ comes. He will dash you into pieces. But you brothers and sisters, whoever want to learn the Bible, just pay attention to the Bible. Don't listen to these murderers, these evil fabric fabricators. We don't believe in that. This is the most idiotic way of presentation. L uh, lies, full of lies and deception. It's not different from Muhammad. He's not. He's fabricating his own, um, you know, his own mind. He's bringing us his own imagination. Evil imagination. An evil man and an evil heart and an evil idea out of the, you know, evil heart proceeds to his mouth and he pollutes people and kills people. This is a destroyer. The evil man. But the Lord Jesus is great. We don't follow cunningly designed fairy tales. We believe in the Lord God Almighty, in Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of mankind, who came and died for us. Yes, and redeemed us from the kingdom of darkness. Praise be to the name of our Lord and Savior. Praise to, be God, to God who loved us and gave His Son to us so that He died 
on our behalf and pay for the price of our sins so that our redemption is complete in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching and uh, listening. Uh, you can, if you have any question, comment, please feel, feel free to leave uh, your message, your, your, your question. I'm ready here to answer. We'll continue debunking this evil man. We will not stop here. We have a lot to cover. May uh, Until we meet again, may the Lord richly bless you. Bye-bye.